And today we have none other than Javon Boyd, Javon Boyd, Javon Boyd. And I would be remiss if I did not say rest in peace to Javon Boyd. All right, now we're going to get into this paperwork. If you have not done so already, hit that subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button and thumb up the video as that gets my videos out to new subscribers, new viewers, and that is really important to the growth of the channel. So definitely thumb up the video and subscribe if you have not. All right, now with this paperwork, man, we have some notable names in here. Um, one mainly, this is the alleged paperwork where supposedly and allegedly Tay Capone, Tay 600, is supposedly had cooperated in this uh, case in some form or fashion. Uh, somebody sent me some um, paperwork also, which was a clip of this, um, but uh, I have the full thing here. So we're going to go through the list right now. So like I said, if you haven't done so, hit that, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. So here we go. All right. This is a case supplementary report and this is a progress report document. Um, and the date of occurrence is February 22nd, 2014 at 0356 hours. Uh, number of victims one, number of offenders one, fire related no, gang related no, domestic no. All right, and we have um, this is a field investigation progress report. Victims one, boy Javon, male black, 28 years, date of birth year 90, uh, 85, excuse me, description. Uh, he was five feet nine, 175 pounds, black hair, short hairstyle, brown eyes, dark brown complexion. His employment was a taxi driver. Uh, the employee's business name was a Pershing, Pershing Library Services. All right. And we have going down to the victim's injuries, uh, gunshot wound via handgun and a semi-automatic pistol. The extent was fatal. All right. And it seems uh, we have a weapon recovered, unknown or unpublished gun make code. A uh, vehicle is also involved in this. Um, uh, possessor was the, vi the victim. A beige uh, 96 car. Um, let me see. Uh, sorry, this is a 96 Infinity I-30 uh, sedan four-door uh, 96. Uh, doesn't say if it was uh, uh, damaged or not, so we'll keep going. Ivory or cream color. Right. Motive code is undetermined at this time. Cause codes, DNA, method code, person shot. Right. We have some other properties recovered. It was a cell phone, an Apple iPhone, um, computer hardware, software, a USB thumb drive, search warrant, and some recording DVD of preserved data. All right, we have a witness here, uh, male black, 30 years of age, description six feet two, 170 pounds, black hair, long hairstyle, brown eyes, dark complexion. Right, then we have a, another witness, a female black, 28 years, five feet two, 175 pounds, black hair, long hairstyle, brown eyes, dark complexion. All right, and we're getting down to an investigation. The following is an investigative progress photo spread supplementary report. So uh, they are doing lineups in this document here. Seems they did on March 1st, 2014, on Saturday. Uh, and the person is viewing the lineup is a female 122. Photo spread depicted in photo, a one Clint Massey, and then one, two, three, four, five, five other individuals that are redacted. Photo spread number two uh, is the first one redacted, second one fully redacted, third fully redacted. The fourth one lists Courtney Ely, J. Ely, and the number five is redacted. Photo spread number three is completely redacted. All right, persons identified in photo spread number one was Clint Massey, number two was Courtney Ely, number I mean, number four was Courtney Ely. Well, photo spread number two, excuse me. Uh, Courtney Ely. And photo spread number three is redacted. All right, we have an investigation. This is an ongoing investigation of the homicide of victim Javon Boyd, recorded under RD number listed 
During the course of this investigation, information was received that Redacted was present and witnessed this homicide. Witness Redacted informed detectives of the nicknames and or names of persons involved in this case and persons present during the time during at the time of this incident occurred. Reporting detectives searched the CPD database and obtained photographs, which were then put in a photo spread in the furtherance of this case. Detective Burns generated photo spread number one. Detective Guerrero generated photo spread two and three. On March 1st, 2014, Witness Redacted was presented with a photo spread advisory form by Detective Garza in the presence of Detective Halloran, which she read and signed in the furtherance of this investigation. Witness Redacted viewed photo spread number one and positively identified the subject in position number one as Redacted. She indicated that Redacted was dressed in black and orange striped outfit at the time of this murder. She further indicated that Redacted was a passenger in the red offender's auto. Witness Redacted was asked to sign and date inside the photo she identified to document her identification, at which time she complied. Witness Redacted viewed photo spread number two and positively identified the subject in position number four as Redacted. Witness Redacted was asked to sign and date inside the photo she identified to document her identification, at which point, excuse me, at which time she complied. Witness Redacted Identify Redacted as a passenger in the maroon vehicle in the front of her vehicle who exited the maroon vehicle wearing a light tan Burberry shirt slash top with light colored pants. Witness Redacted observed Redacted firing a handgun at the victim. Witness Redacted viewed photo spread number three and positive, excuse me, positively identified the subject in position number two as Redacted. Witness Redacted was asked to sign and date inside the photo she identified to document her identification at which time she complied. Witness Redacted observed Redacted exit the rear driver's side of the maroon vehicle in front of her and enter the back seat of her vehicle. This investigation remains in progress. All right. And then going down to the next document, we have is a, another progress report for the supplementary report. Uh, this one was submitted on May 13, 2014. This is a field investigation progress report, <clears throat> and we know, uh, excuse me, we know the victim, and we know the victim's injuries, and the suspects are unknown. They believe just a male black is the description listed. All right. Um, still have vehicle info there. Let's we'll scroll down to see if we can get to an investigation. All right, they're doing... Uh, uh, seems another photo spread. The following is an investigative photo spread progress report. And this one was on uh, March 1st at 1600 hours. All right. And person viewing this photo spread is a female 121. Persons depicted in a photo spread. Photo spread number one is completely redacted. Photo spread number two has uh, one redacted, two redacted, three listed as Courtney J. Ely, four redacted, and five redacted. Photo spread number three, we have a Clint Massey for number one, two is redacted, three is redacted, four is redacted, five is redacted, and six is redacted. All right, the persons identified in photo spread, photo spread number one was individual number two, which is completely redacted. Photo spread number two, number three, and, uh, number three was um, identified, Courtney Ely, and photo spread number three, number one in that position, Clint Massey was identified. Investigation, this is an ongoing invest, uh, homicide investigation wherein victim Javon Boyd was shot and killed recorded under RD number listed. During the course of this investigation, reporting detectives learned of witness redacted. Witness redacted was located and agreed to identify the individuals who were involved and present when this incident occurred. Detective Guerrero presented witness redacted with a photo spread advisory form. Prior to viewing each of the three photo spreads shown, witness redacted read each photo spread advisory form prior to viewing each photo spread and signed each one in the furtherance of this investigation. On March 1st, 2014, at 2250 hours, witness redacted viewed the first photo spread and positively identified the individual depicted in position number two as the person she knows as redacted. Witness redacted stated she observed Redacted run out of the red maroon vehicle, positioned in two cars in front of the vehicle witness Redacted was in, and Redacted ran into the vehicle witness Redacted was seated in. On March 1st, 2014, at 2254 hours, witness Redacted viewed the second photo spread and positively identified the individual depicted in position number three as a person she knows as Redacted. Witness Redacted stated 
She observed Redacted wearing a Burberry shirt and light colored pants, possibly white exit the red maroon vehicle, two cars in front of her at the time of this murder. On March 1st, 2014, at 2255 hours, witness Redacted viewed the third photo spread and positively identified as the individual depicted in position number one, as the person she knows as Redacted. Witness Redacted states she observed Redacted wearing a bright orange and black striped outfit, pants slash jacket, and redacted in the red slash maroon vehicle that was two car lengths in front of the vehicle she was seated in, the same red maroon vehicle that redacted and redacted exited at the time of the murder. This investigation remains in progress. <clears throat> Excuse me. And getting down to the next document, and this is another progress report, and this one was submitted on May 13, 2014 at 1846 hours. Okay, we know uh, the victim and suspects are still unknown scrolling through inventory and we'll get down into uh, potentially another investigation all right we have another uh, photo spread all right the following is an investigative progress photo spread supplementary report um, this one was done on march 3rd 2014 on a monday at 2045 hours persons viewing the photo spread was a female 119 <clears throat> excuse me Persons depicted in photo spread, photo spread number one was number three, Courtney Ely. Photo spread number two was number one, Clint Massey. Photo spread number three is completely redacted. Persons identified in photo spread, photo spread number one is number three, Courtney Ely. Photo spread number two, number one, Clint Massey. Photo spread number three is completely redacted. Investigation. This is an ongoing homicide investigation of victims of on board that is recorded under RD number listed. During the course of this investigation, a witness emerged identified as Redacted. Redacted was located and agreed to talk to detectives and look at photo spread for the purpose of identifying the individuals involved in this homicide and the furtherance of this investigation. On March 3rd, 2014, at 2045 hours, Detective Garza provided witness Redacted with a photo spread advisory form that she read and signed. Witness Redacted was provided with photo spread number one, at which time she identified the person in position number three as the person she knows as C Day. C Day is Courtney Ely, Redacted. She identified, oh, excuse me, she indicated that Ely is the person she observed approach the passenger door of the victim's car with Rondo, and with Rondo subsequently pull open the car door. Witness Redacted was asked to sign and date the photograph she identified. Witness Redacted indicated she would date and write the name of the individual she identified on the photograph, but did not feel comfortable signing her name on the photograph itself. Witness Redacted was provided with photo spread number two, at which time she identified the person in position number one as the person she knows as Rondo. Rondo is Clint Massey. She indicated that Massey is the subject she observed approach the victim's car door with C-Day and ultimately pull the door open with C-Day. She indicated that Massey is the subject she observed shoot into the victim's car at the victim. Witness Redacted was asked to sign and date the photograph she identified. Once again, Witness Redacted indicated she would date and write the name of the individual she identified on the photograph, but did not feel comfortable signing her name on the photograph itself. Witness Redacted provided with photo spread number three, at which time she identified the person in position number two as the person she knows as Redacted is redacted. She indicated that redacted is a subject she observed get out of the offender's maroon vehicle at the time of the shooting and run back to the gray car as Rondo was shooting the victim. Witness redacted then dated and wrote the name of the individual she identified on the photograph only. This investigation remains in progress. All right, we're scrolling down to the next document we have is a cleared open arrest and prosecution document. And this one was submitted on May 13th, 2014 at 1850-300 hours. This is a field investigation clear open arrest and prosecution report. We now have a suspect listed as one Ely Courtney, alias C Day, male one, uh, male black, 19 years. <clears throat> Identified by photo, fingerprint, and videotape. Gang information, listed criminal organization, black disciples. We have another offender, Clint Massey, alias Rondo number nine. Male, black 17, identified by 
photo videotape. All right, and let's see if we can get down to an investigation here. Motive code is still undetermined. Inventory. Okay, we have an investigation. We have in custody individual, one Massey Clint, male 117, a gang affiliation, black disciple, 600 faction, AKA Rondo number nine. Arresting officers is redacted. Charges in court um, would be first degree murder, scheduled to appear. All right, we have a wanted actually um, if for a Courtney Ely, male 119, his gang affiliation, uh, BD 600 faction, AKA C Day. All right, then we have arrest warrant issued for Ely on March 17, 2014, at 1900 hours by Judge Chiampas for first degree murder with no bond. All right, the weapon is a nine millimeter semi automatic pistol that was not recovered. Manner and motive. Above offenders returned to the area of a previous party in a three-car caravan in an effort to retaliate for an altercation that occurred at that party. Upon seeing the lone victim, the above offenders exited their vehicle and shot the victim to death. Vehicles used was a 2005 Pontiac Grand Prix, four-door gray in color. All right. Vehicle was returned to the owner, a 98 Pontiac van, white in color. Registered to redacted, vehicle has extensive damage to include no front bumper, a driver's door that falls off when opening, and a sliding passenger side door that does not open. Vehicle was returned to owner. Unknown maroon or burgundy four-door auto. Right, they have some evidence. This is a photo advisory form signed by so from the witnesses identifying uh, these individuals as being present and them seeing shoot the victim. Um, all right, we had one prisoner property, Clint Massey, iPhone 5 cell phone, redacted. Not sure if this many had a cell phone in, in prison or something, not sure. Um, inventory one CD containing video surveillance footage from the Shell gas station at uh, West Garfield. All right, we got personnel assigned, redacted, a lot of personnel. We got witnesses redacted, female 122, female 121, female 119. So a lot of female witnesses on this case. A male 117, who is a BD uh, from 600. And it looks like they want to interview this male 17 from the 600 faction as well. And we have a male 21 also from 600 that's currently on parole that is to be interviewed as well. All right, we got statements, oral and videotape statements, oral and typewritten statements, news dates. Right. Interviewed female 138, male 119, male 117, a male 119, that is a black peace stone. Male 118, male 119, male 117, male 130. Related um, case numbers. Homicide, first degree murder, victim Steve McGee. That's interesting. I wonder how they tie uh, the little Steve homicide in, into this one. And also an aggravated battery battery aggravated with the handgun. So two aggravated handguns in the first degree. That's interesting. And another homicide actually. So we have related case numbers is from these states. That's interesting, okay. Um, all right, so we're at an investigation. Um, oh, okay, wait, we have contact card, redacted contact list, redacted by beat. Right, not sure. On March 2nd, 2014, at 1601 hours at Redacted 61st Street, Redacted was driving the white 98 Pontiac van. Okay. Investigation. While at the crime scene, Sergeant Young of the 009th District had informed Detective A. Burns that a female who identified herself as Redacted was at the crime scene and that she indicated to the sergeant that she was a witness to the shooting. 
Redacted informed Sergeant Young that she was in her vehicle in traffic on Princeton and 37th Street when she heard gunshots fired. She informed Sergeant Young that she observed a male black with dreadlocks near the victim's vehicle. She said that this subject had a black hooded sweatshirt and fled the scene in a green minivan. Redacted told Sergeant Young that when she exited her vehicle, she dropped her, what I assume is phone here. Redacted provided her contact information as Redacted, excuse me, with a date of birth of Redacted, uh, 92 of Redacted, and a contact cell phone number of Redacted. She was driving a silver Pontiac Grand Prix. Redacted had left the scene prior to Detective Burns' arrival. Detective Burns made efforts to locate and interview Redacted. He subsequently made contact with Redacted via the telephone. Redacted indicated that she was in fact the subject who spoke with the police at the crime scene regarding her being a witness and of the fact that she dropped her cell phone at the scene. Redacted agreed to meet with Detective Burns to be interviewed. However, Redacted never showed up for that interview. On March 1st, 2014, the Office of Area Central Detectives was notified that Redacted was in custody in the 007th District. Redacted was arrested on an outstanding arrest warrant during a traffic stop. All right. And Redacted was interviewed by reporting detectives. She was advised that reporting detectives wished to interview her regarding this murder, but that reporting detectives could not, would not quash her arrest, her arrest warrant. She was further advised that she still needed to appear before a judge on that matter. Redacted agreed to speak with the reporting detectives. Redacted subsequently stated that she was at the party labeled the Redacted. She stated that party was in the area of Redacted. She was at the party with Redacted. She stated that C-Day, Courtney Ely, Redacted, and Rondo No. 9, Clint Massey, were all at the party as well. Redacted stated that Ely, C-Day, was wearing a Burberry shirt, Massey Rondo was wearing an orange and black matching pants and shirt type outfit, which she described as being like Tony the Tiger. She stated that Ely, Massey, and Redacted left the party before she and the other girls got into a fight with girls from the party. Guys who were affiliated with the girls from the party fired gunshots. Redacted left the party in Redacted car. She stated that when they left the party, they dropped Redacted off at their home. Redacted stated that her vehicle is a gray Grand Prix. She stated that Redacted was driving her car when they left the party. Redacted called Ely, excuse me, Ely, C-Day, and told him what had happened at the party. C-Day then told them where to meet him. She stated that they drove to the Wendy's parking lot on 55th Street and met up with Redacted. C-Day, Ely, and Rondo, Massey, Redacted and Massey, Rondo, were in a red car. She stated that Ely, C-Day, was in the white van at this time. The van was being driven by a female she did not know. She stated this female is the sister of Redacted, who was murdered in the past. This female also had a piercing in her nose. She stated that Redacted was driving her car with Redacted and Redacted as passengers. Redacted stated that after they all met at the Wendy's, they all drove to the area of 37th and Princeton. The red car was first with the white van second. She followed as the third vehicle in the caravan in, the, in her Grand Prix. Redacted stated that on Princeton, they passed up a vehicle that was, facing, that was parked facing the wrong way. She stated that after passing this vehicle, all three vehicles made a U-turn in the same formation. The red car stopped followed by the van and then her car all stopped. She stated after the vehicle stopped, she observed Ely Cede get out of the passenger side of the red car. She heard gunfire and observed Ely Cede firing a handgun. Redacted got out of the back seat of a red car and got into her car. Then all three vehicles drove off. She could then see the victim in the gold car slumped over as if he had been shot. Redacted stated that they dropped Redacted off at his home. She stated that she, Redacted, then drove to the Shell gas station at 55th and Halstead. Redacted and Redacted got out of her car and got into the white van. Ely Cede then got into her car and told her and Redacted that he had dropped his cell phone at the crime scene. She stated that she knows Ely Cede has a white iPhone. She has seen him with the phone before. She stated that Ely C-Day asked her to take him back to the scene of the shooting to get his phone. 
Redactors say that they would look suspicious going back to the scene where they just shot someone, but she agreed to take him back to the scene. Redactor stated that she, Redactor, and Ely returned to the scene in her car. Redactor stated that in the car ride back to the scene, Ely told them he had asked the victim where he was from and if he was from around here, meaning 37th and Princeton, Wentworth area. The victim replied that he was from around here. C. Day then told her that after the victim made that reply, it was man down. She knew this to mean the victim was killed. Redactor stated that when they returned to the scene, she saw the police on the scene. She parked about a block away and walked to the scene, leaving Ely and Redactor in her car. She told the police that she saw a man shooting and this man fled in a green van. She stated she made that story up and that it was not true. Redactor stated that she told the police on the scene that she had lost her white iPhone. The police told her she would have to wait until the police tape was removed before she could look for it. She stated that she returned to the vehicle where Ely, C. Day, and Redacted remained waiting. She told Ely what the police had told her. Ely, C. Day then asked her to drive up to the scene in another effort to get his phone back. She then drove closer to the scene with C. Day and Redacted in the car with her. She again asked the police if they had seen her phone. They told her that they told her they had not seen the phone. When the police asked her for her name and phone number, she provided the police with a false first name and the correct last name. She believed the name she provided was redacted. She provided the police with her real phone number. Ely Cide provided her with his phone number. She in turn gave that number to the police as the missing phone. She believed the police took down her plate number. She then dropped Ede, oh, excuse me, Ely excuse me, Cide off she and Redacted drove home to Redacted. Redacted signed a photo advisory form. She positively identified photos of Courtney Ely as Cide, Clint Massey as Ronald number nine, Redacted as Redacted. She further identified photos of Ely in a Burberry shirt and indicated that this was the same shirt he was wearing at the time of his murder. Redacted also stated that she grew up with Ely, Cide. Redacted further identified a photo of Clint Massey in an orange and black striped outfit and indicated that this was the same outfit Massey was wearing at the time of this murder. Redacted further provided recording detectives with the possible location of Redacted and Redacted indicated that she believed that Redacted was also in control of Redacted Grand Prix. Redacted was located on March 1st, 2014 by Redacted, was located as she entered Redacted Grand Prix at Redacted agreed to relocate into the Office of Area Central Detectives and further into this investigation. Redacted Grand Prix was also relocated to the area and photographed by an evidence technician. Redacted was interviewed by the reporting detectives. Redacted initially denied being present at this murder. Upon further questioning, Redacted related that she was at a party in the area of 37th and Wells with Redacted. Also at the party with her were Courtney Ely, C. Day, Clint Massey, Ronald number nine, and Redacted, and another female known to her as Redacted. She stated that Ely, C. Day, Ronald number nine, and Redacted left the party. She stated that after these guys left the party, the girls got into an argument with the girls from, an, from the party. Redacted stated that the argument moved outside. The men with the other group of girls fired about nine gunshots. Redacted stated that she got into the car with Redacted and Redacted, known as Redacted, she stated that Redacted were immediately dropped off at 59th and Calumet. Redacted stated that Redacted called Ely Cide and told him that they were in a fight at the party and they were, and that they were shot at. Ely told them to meet him at the Wendy's of 55th and Wells and they would all go back to the area of the party together. Redacted stated that they met at the Wendy's. She stated that Redacted then became the driver of Redacted car. Redacted were also in Redacted car. They followed two other vehicles to the scene of the shooting. She stated that the first car was a red four-door auto driven by an unknown male black with dreads, caramel, caramel skin, and a mustache. She stated that also in the red car were Ely, Cide, Massey, Rondo number no. 9, and Redacted. The second vehicle was a white van driven by a female whose name she did not know. She stated that she believed this female is the sister of a subject named Redacted who was murdered in the past. She did not see any other occupants of the white van. 
Redacted car was then the third vehicle in the procession. Redacted stated they followed the red car in, in white van to 37th and Princeton. She stated that they drove in a procession with the red car first, the white van second, and redacted car third. Redacted stated that they never went to the scene of the party slash fight. She stated that they drove on Princeton past the victim who was in his vehicle alone. She stated that as they passed the victim, she looked directly at him. She could see that the victim was older and was not part of the group they had a problem with earlier in the evening. Redacted stated that the victim was minding his own business. Redacted stated that they drove past the victim and then all three vehicles turned around at a circle and drove back to the victim in the same order, red car, white van, and redacted car. Redacted stated that all three vehicles stopped. She stated that her view was partially blocked because she was behind the white van. She heard two gunshots fired. She saw a van that was parked to the north of the victim's auto suddenly jerk as if it had been crashed into. Redacted ran to redacted car and got in. He was laughing when he got into the car. All three vehicles then drove off. As they passed the victim's auto, she could see that the victim had been shot and that he was now slumped over. Redacted then said the victim was dead. Redacted stated that they drove to 55th and Halstead to the gas station. She thought it was the shell. E -day, uh, excuse me, C. Day Ely then told Redacted to get into the van, white van. They did. Ely C. Day then got into the car with Redacted, was still driving. Ely C. Day told them to drive him back to the scene because he dropped his cell phone at the crime scene. He also told them that he had dropped his phone at another crime scene and that was how the police got to him to arrest him in the past. Ely C. Day told them that he had asked the victim where he was from. The victim replied that he was from the area. Ely C. Day then said, it's over, man down. Redacted stated she knew this to mean Ely C. Day killed the victim. Redacted drove himself home before they returned to the crime scene in an attempt to get Ely's cell phone. Redacted stated that she, Redacted, and Ely returned to the crime scene of the shooting. Redacted got out and asked the police if she could get her phone because she had dropped it there. Redacted told the police she dropped it when the shots were fired from a green van. Police told her they could not return the phone and that she would have to talk to the detectives. Redacted returned to the car and told Ely C. Day. Ely C. Day then directed Redacted to drive up to the police tape and ask for the phone again. Redacted did so and talked to the police from inside her car. Redacted gave the police her name as Redacted. She provided the number of Ely's C. Day's missing phone and then gave the police Redacted cell number as a contact number. Redacted stated she and Redacted then dropped Ely C. Day off at 60th in Indiana. Redacted then went home to Redacted. Redacted described Ely C. Day as wearing a beige Burberry shirt. She described Massey Rondo number nine, number nine as wearing a matching orange black stripe, tiger stripe jacket and pants. She stated that Redacted was wearing blue jeans and a dark hoodie. Redacted signed a photo advisory form. She positively identified Courtney Ely C. Day, Clint Massey Rondo number nine and Redacted also identified photos of Redacted. Redacted further consented to a search of her phone. She signed a consent to search form, which was subsequently inventoried under inventory number listed. Redacted identified photos of Massey Rondo number nine wearing the same tiger stripe outfit and holding a semi-automatic pistol. She related that was the same outfit Massey was wearing at the time of the murder. She also provided a photo of Ely C. Day in his beige Burberry shirt. She stated that this was the same outfit Ely C. Day wore at the time of the murder. Felony Review ASA uh, Bandari was contacted and responded to the Office of Area Central Detectives. The ASA reviewed the facts of the case. Redacted was interviewed by ASA Bandari. Redacted related the same account as detailed above. Redacted agreed to have her statement videotaped. Redacted statement was videotaped on March 2nd, 2014 at 0436 hours in the presence of ASA and Detective Garza. Redacted was interviewed by ASA. Redacted related the same account as is detailed above. Redacted agreed to have her statement videotaped. Redacted statement was videotaped on March 2nd, 2014 at 0346 hours in the presence of ASA and Detective Howland. 
On March 2nd, 2014, the reporting detective submitted an ISP request to have the fingerprint lift recovered from the exterior of the pa on the passenger side window of the victim's car to be compared to suspects Courtney Ely and Clint Massey. On March 4th, 2014, the ISP lab notified the Office of Area Central that the comparison revealed that the suitable latent impression was made by Courtney Ely. The security surveillance footage video from the Wendy's restaurant located on 55th and Princeton was viewed and recovered. The surveillance video was inventory under inventory number listed. The security video surveillance from the Shell gas station located at Redacted West Garfield was viewed and recovered. The reporting detectives researched the murder of Steve McGee. On March 2nd, 2014, Detective Garza spoke with Redacted. She related that Redacted stated that Redacted is also called Redacted, stated that Redacted told her that she was at the party that resulted in this murder. Redacted further stated that Redacted drives a white van. A computer check of the CPD database revealed that D311 police officers conducted a traffic stop on Redacted on March 2nd, 2014 at 1601 hours. Redacted was driving the white Pontiac van described above in the format of this re uh, report. Several male one subjects fled from this vehicle and managed to elude the police. Redacted was interviewed by the officers on B311. She did not know the occupants who fled. She was issued a citation and drove off in the van. A contact car, contact car redacted was completed by the officers at the time of the stop. The officers on B311 came into the area and viewed the video from this murder. They both indicated that the white van on the video was in fact the van they stopped on this date, March 2nd, 2014, at 1601 hours. They further identified Redacted as the driver of that van. The reporting detectives showed officers a group of photos, including Ely, Massey, Redacted. Both officers positively identified Ely, Courtney Ely, Cide, and Redacted as two of the subjects who fled from the van upon their stop of the vehicle. Uh, poor Bushi was tentative on redacted as being one of the subjects who fled. Reporting detectives searched for a redacted in the white van, but were met but met with negative results. The plate reader system had located the van at redacted address on March second at zero five hundred hours. The vehicle information was entered into the Leeds database as a wanted vehicle. On March third, twenty fourteen, Beats and officers located Redacted in her white van. They all conducted a stop and discovered Redacted driving with six other young men in the vehicle. All other occupants were transported into the area Office of Area Central in furtherance of this investigation. The following subjects were interviewed by the reporting detectives after being identified as passengers in Redacted van. Redacted related that he had no school on this date. He was at home when Redacted came to his house to pick him up in her white van. He stated that Redacted was already with Redacted and three other male subjects he did not know Redacted. He stated that they drove to the parkway at 64th and King Drive where he, Redacted, got out of the van to go into Redacted House to play Xbox 360. The police were on the scene and detail, detained all of them. He stated he has no knowledge of any shooting incidents. Redacted related that he was at 64th and MLK Drive in a white van with a female, Redacted driving picked them up. Redacted and Redacted were already in the van with three other unknown guys. They were going to play, going to Redacted to play Xbox when the police stopped and detained them. He stated he has no knowledge of any shooting incidents. Redacted stated that he called Redacted and asked her to pick him up in her white van. She picked him up at 54th and Laughlin. When she picked him up, there were several other boys in the van that he did not know. They drove to 64th and MLK Drive to drop some of the boys off and were stopped by the police. He stated that he has no knowledge of any shooting incidents. Redacted stated that Redacted picked he and Redacted up in her white van after school. He stated there were four other unknown subjects in the van with her. They were going to go to McDonald's after they dropped the other unknown suspects subjects off. They drove to 64th and MLK Drive where they were stopped by the police. He stated he has no knowledge of any shooting incidents. Redacted stated he was with Redacted and was going to pick up Redacted. He stated Redacted picked him up in her van at 64th and MLK Drive. She then gave them a ride to pick up Sergeant at 69 and Morgan. She picked up two other unknown subjects at 57th and Lavalin. After she picked 
everyone up. They drove to 64 for MLK. Redacted got out of the van when the police stopped him. He stated he has no knowledge of any shooting incidents. Redacted stated he called Redacted up and asked her to give him a ride to pick Redacted up. He stated he was with Redacted all day. He stated that Redacted also picked up two other subjects he did not know. He stated they drove to 64th and MLK Drive, where the police then stopped him. He stated he had no knowledge of any shooting incidents. Redacted was interviewed by the reporting detective. She related that she is also known as Redacted. She stated that her brother is Redacted and that he was murdered in 2011. Redacted stated that she met one of her brother's friends known as c -Day, approximately three months before her brother's death. She stated she only knows c -Day by his nickname, but she has known him for approximately three years. Redacted further stated that she also knows a subject known as Rondo. She stated she only knows Rondo by his nickname. She related that she also met Rondo a few months before her brother's murder and has known him for approximately three years. Redacted stated that she also knows a subject known as Redacted. She does not know his full name. She stated that she met Redacted a couple months ago after she met him through the people she hangs out with. Redacted signed a photo advisory form and made positive identifications of Courtney Ely as CDA, Clint Massey as Rondo, and Redacted as Redacted. The advisory form and photo arrays were inventoried under inventory number listed. Redacted further related that on the night of Friday, 21st, February, uh, excuse me, Friday, February 21st, 2014, into the early morning hours of Saturday, 20, uh, February 22nd, 2014, she went to a party in Wentworth Gardens. She stated that she drove her white Pontiac van. She went to the party with Ely Cide and Massey Rondo. Rel uh, Redacted related that Massey Rondo was wearing an orange and black jumpsuit that looked like Tony the Tiger. She stated that Ely Cide was wearing a Burberry shirt to the party that night. Redacted stated that they met up with Redacted at the party. She stated that a subject she knows as Redacted was also at the party with them. She stated that there were other people at the party that she knew as well. Redacted stated that after attending the party for a while, she left the party with Ely Cide, Massey Rondo, and another subject she only knows as Redacted. They all left in her van. She stated that they drove around in her van for a while. She stated that one of the guys in her van got a phone call. She could not remember who got the call. She stated that she could tell from the conversation being had on the phone that the caller was another guy who attended the party. She stated she could also tell that the phone conversation was about a fight that had occurred, had occurred at the party. She added that she could also tell from the conversation that there had been gunshots fired at that party. Redacted stated that after the phone call, they drove to a truck stop on 39th Street. She stated that they drove to the Wendy's on 55th Street. Redacted stated that at these two locations, they met up with people in a maroon car and people in a gray car. Redacted stated that when they met up, Massey Rondo and Ely Cide got out of her van and into and got into the maroon car as passengers. She stated that she did not know who was driving the maroon car and did not know if they were, there were any other passengers besides Massey and Ely at that point. Massey was still dressed in the orange and black tiger stripe outfit and Ely was dressed in the Burberry shirt. Redacted stated that there were some females in the gray car along with some guys as well. She stated she was not sure who they were. Redacted stated that she was driving her van with Redacted as the only passenger. Redacted stated that, uh, excuse me, Redacted stated after Ely and Massey switched cars, all three of the vehicles drove together back to the area of the party. She stated that they drove to 37th and Princeton. She stated that they drove in a three car caravan with the maroon car leading the way. She followed second in her white van and the gray car followed third behind her. Redacted stated that as they drove down Princeton, she observed a parked vehicle with only one man inside. She stated this vehicle was parked facing the wrong way. She stated they drove past the man and then the maroon car made a U-turn and headed back toward the parked vehicle with the one occupant. She stated she then made a U-turn and followed the maroon car. She stated the gray car turned around behind her. Redacted stated that she did not know why they turned around because the party was still further down the street. Redacted stated that the maroon car pulled up next to the car parked with the one man inside. The maroon car stopped and Massey Rondo and Ely Cide exited the maroon car 
Massey, Rondo number nine, was wearing an orange and black outfit while Ely Cide had on the Burberry shirt. Redacted stated that she had a clear view and that there were no vehicles between her and the maroon car. Redacted stated that Massey, Rondo, and Ely Cide approached the parked car with the lone occupant. Redacted stated that both Massey, Rondo, and Ely Cide approached the man's car. As Ely Cide and Massey Rondo stood side by side, they both attempted to pull the car door open. She stated that they were on the passenger side of the man's car, pulling on his car door on his door. She stated that they managed to pull the car door open. She stated she could not see, she could not say if it was Ely Cide or Massey Rondo who finally managed to pull the door open. Redacted stated that after the door was pulled open, she observed Massey Rondo and Ely Cide still side by side. She observed Massey Rondo with a gun in his hand. Redacted stated that she observed Massey Rondo shoot into the car at the lone occupant. She stated that she uh, heard four or five gunshots fired. Redacted stated that as Massey Rondo was shooting into the man's car, she saw Redacted get out of the maroon car and run back to the gray car behind her. She stated that after Massey Rondo shot into the car, Ely Cide got back into the maroon car. She stated that Massey Rondo followed Ely Cide and got back into the maroon car. They all then drove away. Redacted stated that she followed the maroon car to the gas station on 55th Street. She stated all the three vehicles pulled into the gas station. Redacted stated that when they all got to the gas station, she observed Ely Cide get out of the maroon car and get into the gray car. She stated that Redacted got into her van. She stated that a subject she knows as Redacted also got into her van at the gas station. She stated that she observed Redacted get out of the gray car and then get into her van while at the gas station. Redacted stated that she then drove Redacted to his house and then dropped and, and she dropped Redacted off at his house. Redacted stated that she had she and Redacted then went to her house. Redacted further provided the reporting detectives with Massey Rondo phone number. Redacted stated that Ely Cide had changed his phone number. She stated his old number was redacted and his new number is now redacted. Redacted further provided reporting detectives with two phone numbers for Redacted. Redacted also identified photos of Massey Rondo dressed in the orange and black outfit and again indicated that this was the same outfit Massey Rondo wore at the time of the murder. She identified a photo of Ely Cide dressed in a Burberry shirt and again indicated that this was the same shirt he was wearing at the time of this murder. She identified a photo of Redacted and indicated that this was the subject she referred to as Redacted, further identified a still photo of the crime in progress recovered from the video surveillance at the scene. Felony Review ASA Patrick Waller was notified. He responded to area and reviewed the facts of this investigation. ASA Waller interview Redacted. She related the same account as detailed above. Redacted statement was reduced to writing in the form of a typewritten statement by ASA. All right. On March 6, 2014, Redacted was located by Gang Investigations 6510 team. Redacted was then interviewed by the reporting detectives. Redacted initially denied being present for this murder. The reporting detectives confronted him with the fact that several other people have, been, have already been interviewed and identified, Redacted as being present. Redacted subsequently related that he was in fact present for this murder. Redacted stated that he is also known as Redacted or Redacted. He stated his rap name is Redacted. Redacted stated that he has been friends with Courtney Ely for at least five years. He stated that Ely also goes by the name of Cide. He stated he has been friends with Rondo for approximately seven years. Redacted further stated that he has also been friends with Redacted for approximately 12 years. Redacted identified photos of Courtney Ely as being Cide, Clint Massey as being known as Rondo, and of Redacted as being also known as Redacted. Redacted stated that on Friday, February 21st, 2014, after 2200 hours, he went to a party in the area of 38th and Princeton. He stated that while he was at the party, he saw Ely, Cide, Massey, Rondo, and Redacted at the party. He stated that Ely Cide was wearing a Burberry shirt and Massey Rondo was wearing an orange and black matching outfit. Redacted stated that two other friends known as Redacted were, at, were also at the party. Redacted stated that at, the, at some point, Ely Cide, Massey Rondo, Redacted left the party. Redacted stayed. 
The Baptist stated that some girls he knew began arguing with another group of girls at the party. He stated that he was outside of the party when someone in the other group fired some gunshots. Redacted stated that he left the party with a group of girls and a subject he knows as Redacted. He identified photos of Redacted and Redacted. He stated there were two other girls in the car. One of them was called Redacted. Stayed they left in Redacted Gray Grand Prix. Redacted stated that when they drove away from the party, he made a phone call to a female he calls Redacted. He stated she gave the phone to Redacted. Stated he did. He told Redacted of the fight and shots fired at the party. Redacted told Redacted that he did not want to talk on the phone. Redacted told Redacted to meet him at the Wendy's on 55th Street. Redacted stated that they dropped Redacted and the other female off before they drove to the Wendy's. Redacted stated that Redacted and he Redacted then drove to meet at the Wendy's. Redacted stated that when they got to the Wendy's, a white van pulled up with a maroon auto. He stated the girl he knows as Redacted was driving the white van. He identified a photo of Redacted as being Redacted, the driver of the white van. Redacted stated that Redacted was in the car or was in the white van with Redacted. He stated a male subject with dreadlocks was driving the maroon car. Redacted further stated that he saw Massey Rondo and Redacted in the maroon car as well. He stated at this time he had not seen Ely seated. Redacted stated that Massey Rondo was still wearing the orange and black matching outfit. Redacted stated that all three vehicles left the Wendy's together. He stated that the maroon car led the caravan with the white van behind it and the gray car behind the white van. He stated that there were four people in the gray car he was in. Redacted and he, Redacted, was driving the white van with Redacted as a passenger. At this time, he was aware that the male with dreadlocks was driving the maroon car with Massey Rondo and Redacted as passengers. Redacted stated that all three cars drove to the area of 37th and Princeton. Redacted stated that he thought they were going to be going back to the party. Excuse me. Redacted stated that when they drove down to Princeton, the maroon car made a U-turn followed by the white van and the, then the gray car he was in. He stated he did not know why they made the U-turn. He stated that after they made the U-turn, they were traveling south toward Redacted Street. He stated that after they made the U-turn, all three vehicles came to a stop. He stated that he was in the back seat of the car, slouched down when he heard shots, gunshots fired. He stated he sat up and Redacted walked back to the gray car and got into the car with him. Redacted stated he saw Massey Rondo shooting inside the passenger side of a vehicle that was parked on the side of the street. He stated there was one more shot fired at that point. He stated that after the shooting, he saw Massey Rondo get back into the maroon car. Redacted stated that when Redacted got into the gray car, he was laughing. Redacted stated that all three vehicles then drove off. He stated that as they passed the parked car that Massey Rondo was shooting into, he saw that a man was shot and slumped over in the vehicle. Redacted stated they followed the other two vehicles to the gas station on 55th and Halstead. He stated that when the gray car he was then pulled into the gas station, he saw that Ely Cide was already standing out, out, of one, out of the vehicles. He stated he did not see which vehicle Ely Cide got out of. Redacted stated that Ely Cide was still wearing the same Burberry shirt that he was wearing earlier at the party. Redacted stated that he got out of the gray car and got into the white van driven by Redacted. He stated that he then that he was then dropped off at home. Redacted identified photos of Redacted Massey as Rondo, Courtney Ely as Cide, as well as photos of Massey Rondo in the orange and black orange and black matching outfit that he was wearing at the time of the murder and Ely Cide in the Burberry shirt he was wearing at the time of the murder. Felony Review ASA was contacted and responded to the area. She reviewed the facts of the case. ASA Bandari interview redacted. He related the same account as, de as is detailed above. Redacted statement was reduced to writing by ASA in the form of a typewritten statement on March 6, 2014 at 2245 hours in the presence of Detective Garza. On March 7, 2014, Detective Garza appeared before Judge Margaret 
with an application for in order to authorize the installation and use of a pen register and caller identification trap and trace device on Clint Massey's phone number. Redacted. Judge authorized the application number. On March 7, 2014, at 1905 hours, Clint Massey Rondo number no. 9 was taken into custody by the Gang Investigations Unit Team 6510 and 6520. Massey was transported into the office of Area Central. Massey's redactor was notified that he was in custody at the area. Massey was subsequently advised of his Miranda rights, to which he related he understood. Massey requested an attorney and refused to answer any questions. The interview was terminated. Massey's cell phone was recovered on his person at the time of his arrest. The phone was inventoried on the inventory number listed. Detective obtained a search warrant on Massey's cell phone, redacted. The phone was then taken to RCFL for further processing. Massey was in the company of redacted at the time of his arrest. Redacted was interviewed by the reporting detectives. Redacted related he was with Clint Massey around the number nine at the time of Massey's arrest. He was a passenger in a rented Ford Explorer driven by Redacted with Massey as a passenger. Also in the truck at one point was a subject known as Redacted as a passenger. He stated he, he stated has known Massey for three months. Redacted stated that Massey's mother repeatedly asked Redacted to mentor Massey and talk to him to keep him out of, the tr out of trouble. Redacted stated that he met up with Massey an hour and a half before being stopped by the police. Redacted and Redacted picked Massey up at Redacted. They then went to Redacted for takeout food. After Redacted, they were going to go to the going to go to the Redacted at Redacted. Redacted stated he has no knowledge of any shootings that Massey may be involved in. On March 10, 2014, Detective Garza received a court order signed by judge authorizing any and all subscriber information all incoming and outgoing calls, all incoming and outgoing text messages, historical cell type tower lo locations, distance to cell tower and GPS locations for the time period of February 21st, 2014 through February 23rd, 2014 for Clint Massey's phone number redacted. After reviewing the facts to this investigation, felony review ASA approved charges of first degree murder on Clint Massey. Massey was scheduled to appear in Branch 66 on March 10, 2014. With the arrest and charging of this offender, the reporting detectives request that this assignment be classified and cleared open by arrest and prosecution. Report of Detectives Halloran, Guerrero, Garza, and Burns. All right, and we have one more, uh, or not one more, but another document here uh, following that which is an additional progress report that was submitted on May 16th, 2014 at 1836 hours. All right, and we know the offenders are Courtney Ely, C-Day, and one Rondo number nine. And we're scrolling down to get to an investigation here. Investigation, all right, in custody they have Courtney Ely, uh, which is C-Day. Um, arrest warrant was issued for Ely on March 17th, 2014. Right. And his charges were first degree murder, warrant arrest scheduled to appear in court. Right. They interviewed male 117 from the, the 600 faction and a male 121 uh, from the 600 faction. All right. In furtherance of this investigation, the reporting detectives appeared before Judge uh, Chiampas on March 17, 2014, at 1900 hours. Judge Chiampas issued an arrest warrant on Courtney Ely, aka C Day, for the charge of first degree murder with no bond. Ely was apprehended by members of the Gang Investigations Unit under the direction of Lieutenant on March 17, 2014, 1930 hours, at Redacted. Ely was transported to the Office of Area Central Detective Division. Ely was advised of his Miranda rights, to which he related he understood. Ely uh, refused to answer any questions, and he requested an attorney. Courtney Ely, a.k.a. C. Day, was charged with first-degree murder and scheduled to appear in court on May, March 18, 2014. Redacted. The reporting detectives attempted to interview Redacted in regards to the murder of Javon Boyd. Redacted denied that he was present and denied any knowledge or participation in this murder. Efforts to locate and interview Redacted continue, and investigative alert remains active on Redacted. With the arrest and charging of Courtney Ely, the reporting detectives request that this assignment be classified as clear, closed by arrest and prosecution. 
Report of Detectives Holleran, Guerrero, Garza, Badalini, Burns Jr. And that is the end of our document here. And I'm going to read this here. Went to Pershing Center Marathon Gas Station and spoke with Redacted. Oh, they just, okay. We viewed the, his video cameras. Um, the cameras are over 12 years old and do not show a very clear picture. Because the camera was placed high, there is a glare from the lights. After viewing the video footage, there was nothing captured further to further this investigation. Tomorrow, we will check at Jim Burr Steel Company located at Redacted to see if, there, if they have any video footage. Also, we ran contact cars of the area to see if there were any vehicles stopped matching the description of the three observed on the video, but that was also negative. All right, and now we have the end of the document. Yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, in regards to that Tate 600 accusations, I didn't see um, any mention of his name in the paperwork, although there was a mention of um, a rapper, but it did not list that name. So I guess we, we should clear all that up. And thank you for watching. Peace.